Hi, this is Dave Dirks, co-author of the book, The New Marketing Analytics. In this particular video segment, I want to talk to you about something that um, you hear a lot in the business circles, and that is, you know, the development of loyalty programs. And for businesses that are considering uh, developing their own loyalty programs, or for businesses who are looking to improve their, the effectiveness of their loyalty programs, um, I can tell you this uh, fundamentally from based, based on the experience I've had over many years now with loyalty programs. First of all, I think you, the, the most basic thing that has to happen is you really need to understand and define what it is you're trying to develop your loyalty program for. And you'd be surprised how often that, you know, people say, well, I just want them to come in and buy a product or I want them to come in and get, you know, d buy with more frequency. And those are all good things. But beyond just obviously selling, you know, selling more product to customers, I think you, you probably have a little bit more of an opportunity here to take a look at maybe uh, I want to encourage my very profitable customers to stay here, to, to, to keep bringing their profitable buying purchases in my wheelhouse, in my business, as opposed to going down the street um, and buying uh, somewhere else. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, consumers have more options than ever, and it's very rare when you find any kind of business uh, uh, industry or, or, or service type uh, business that has a, you know a monopoly or a near monopoly on 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 products or services that they offer. It's, it's almost in, impossible to find it. The web and certain other technological uh, changes have kind of diffused everything and now a lot of products and services that used to be, you know, structurally uh, unavailable except through certain organizations and cer certain businesses are now, you know, commoditized and, and available, you know, far widely and far less expensively than before. So we know that customers have plenty of choices out there besides going to you know my place of business or yours so going back to the loyalty program um the first thing that what i generally will look at is i'll find out and i want to look at what kind of data do you collect today if you have a good definition and a good a business objective for what you want your loyalty program to do for you the second thing is you've got to look at the depth and the breadth of of customer data that you're collecting and I'm not talking about just collecting, you know, name, address, phone number, and email address. And, and certainly those have to be a part of your customer database. Those are fundamental. But I'm talking about understanding and, and what people buy and when they buy them, what products they buy, um, what customer service data that you can add uh, to it when they call and they have a return or they have a complaint. Um, knowing as much as you possibly can about what that customer does within your enterprise is absolutely essential. And being able to have that available on that customer account uh, is, 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 to me, it's, it's almost impossible to develop, I think, a really effective loyalty program unless you have a really good and as deep as possible uh, amount of data on your customers. This, the other thing that we take, tend to look at, too, is if you do have existing data and it seems to be of enough depth and quality, uh, the next thing is, how is it organized? A lot of times we find companies haven't necessarily organized and curated the data that they have so that what we could do is very easily run some uh, demographic analysis against your customers and then start to see how certain customers start to aggregate into certain buckets because not everybody is the same. The customers, I know a lot of businesses try to think that their customers when they come in to buy a product are buying that product for the same reason everybody else is but the answer to that is generally not and they don't look like each other they don't earn the same money they don't live in the same neighborhood they don't drive the same car they don't maybe have the same education they're all different but if you're not um, acutely aware of how those customers if you have 10,000 customers how many different kinds of, uh, of, of buckets do they fall into you might have you know a couple thousand to fall into bucket A, B, C, and D. All of them distinctly different kinds of demographic buckets. But that's really the first step to starting to understand how you can relate back who they are and what they buy and when they buy it from you to how do I now develop a loyalty program that can be, that most effectively really, really works 
that it really brings them back to the table, that it allows you to collect even more data. And, and that's, a, that's, that's kind of the conundrum that a lot of businesses are in. They think that you simply just, you know, throw out a loyalty program um, and then, you know, people should just show up. Doesn't work that way. Loyalty programs today are a dime a dozen. So differentiating yourself um, against uh, your competitors and developing an effective loyalty program starts with having really good data starts with having an excellent understanding of who your customer segments are and then from those understanding and, and understandings and insights being able to develop um, the right triggers that will pull different customer segments in and developing your loyalty program on the basis or on the foundation of that so that's all i'm going to talk about today in this segment i want to encourage you if you'd like more information about the new marketing analytics you can uh, obviously go on web, uh, Amazon to purchase a copy. You can also go to our website and get more information at www.newmarketinganalytics.com. This is Dave Dirks thanking you again for taking the time to listen. Have a great day.